What's up guys, welcome back to Unreal Dev Hub. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about all of the awesome new features just announced and released in Unreal Engine 5.6 today. After the State of Unreal presentation, there is some awesome stuff in here for Nanite, MetaHuman, and general performance for your games. So stay tuned, this is gonna be an awesome set of updates. Let's jump in. let's get started with Nanite. So if you've used Unreal Engine 5 before, you're probably familiar with Nanite. It is what powers the engine to load millions of objects at a time to show millions of triangles in frame by using a virtualized geometry solution to load and unload triangles as necessary, creating auto LODs for your geometry. So it's been super impressive with how it handles static meshes, then skeletal meshes, and now coming to the table is Nanite foliage. So the ability for Nanite to now handle large swaths of geometry, you know, things like vegetation, things that would fill out more organic landscape and open world sphere game is going to be huge. This is something that everyone has been asking for and it is finally coming. So super excited to get hands on with this. This is such an awesome update. And one of the ways they describe that this is going to now be possible is through the Nanite assembly workflow. So it seems like the way this is going to work is that in order to not have super heavy models that have, you know, millions of triangles for every trees, you would create a kit of parts. So things like leaves, pine needles, branches working up into the trunks of trees and then building systems which you know would array these smaller assets to create full trees so that it's more of a procedural workflow there's been some unreal engine talks in the past about using pcg to do things like this and it sounds like they've scaled this into its own system basically allowing you to build these really dynamic vegetation assets that would also be super low weight and can be used through the nanite workflow so one of the big things that you know people have also been asking for is general nanite performance it's already pretty spectacular but when it comes to vegetation one of the things that they're describing is going to help power this nanite vegetation solution is going to be a new voxel solution in the past when building things like vegetation people are familiar with what are referred to as cards where in the past you would basically planar map uh, things like leaves onto a flat or bent plane you know if you played old video games you remember you walk up to a tree and all of the leaves are x's like this with planar mapped leaves on both sides. So that's changing. This voxel solution is supposed to be extremely performant and really is only going to happen when the vegetation is at a very small pixel size in your screen, but they're describing it as ultimately performant and is just the next big thing for Nanite foliage. So that's super exciting. Um, another thing that is on the table is chaos updates. So Obviously, a lot of people are familiar with Chaos Destruction. That's not what's getting updated, so gotcha. There's gonna be some updates to first Chaos Cloth. So in the demonstration that they showed at State of Unreal for The Witcher, they used the character's garments as an example. I'm sure people have played games where you're you know, your cape is clipping through your legs and your back. And when cl different cloths, you know, collide with each other, oftentimes because they're thin physics bodies, they'll just penetrate each other and really just not look very good. So there's some big updates coming to Chaos Cloth. Apparently a lot of the solving solutions have been dramatically improved. So I'm really excited to see how this works. So many games have cloth. This is gonna benefit really so many games that just have loose clothing. So really excited to see how this takes shape. And, you know, a quick reminder, if you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel. You know, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel. My goal is to bring awesome content around Unreal Engine 5 and gaming to you. So if you love learning about Unreal Engine 5 and what you can do with it and love to build games, follow the channel, appreciate it. Up next is Chaos Fluid. So personally, I haven't been really able to do what I want with a lot of the fluid simulation and general water system in the past. You know, I know Unreal Engine is pushing it in Unreal Engine 5, and there's been some valuable updates that personally I haven't really been able to use to 100% of their capacity. Uh, it seems really like the water simulation and water tools require expertise all on their own. So they're describing, you know, Chaos Fluid Sim. This to me is interesting, and I think we're used to kind of seeing water behave in the world in very similar ways um, using tools of often spline meshes that you know are uv down the length of the spline to work as a river so we'll see if this you know really comes to fruition but this is something that they described as you know a big push for the chaos system so excited about this one up next is one of the things that epic seems super huge about is they describe this as an update to the general character animation framework so in recent updates you know unreal engine 5 mass and smart objects are described as the kind of future of 
of how they anticipate users will populate large environments with dynamic characters. So in this tech demo from the CD Projekt Red team for The Witcher 4, they're showing this environment which they say has 300 plus animated skeletal mesh characters. So honestly, it looks awesome. I'd love to see how it performs. They describe it as being 60 FPS on PlayStation 5, so that's cool. Um, but you know, so smart objects have been pretty useful. Mass could definitely use improvements. And so I'm really interested to see how this takes shape in terms of the optimization of the tools and really how you can plug in your own assets to make performant environments with super dynamic character behaviors. So seemingly, you know, all the characters here are responsive. So let's see how this works. I'm really excited. You know, this is the type of tool that a lot of developers want to build out really immersive environments. So let's see where this goes. MetaHuman is absolutely the star of the show in this year's State of Unreal. They seem to just be pushing it and recognize that a lot of developers want their hands on it. Uh, there are definitely other players in the character creation toolkit game, and they are pushing back with a lot of awesome and and really intuitive tools that are going to make the pipeline a lot easier for Unreal Engine developers who want to make this core to their character workflows. So a handful of new tool integrations here. First off is one of the biggest things that is really a just a, a quality of life thing. The integration of the MetaHuman editor into Unreal Engine 5 itself is just awesome. If you've ever used the MetaHuman online editor before, you know it's through an online portal where you basically go to the website edit your metahuman through some sort of pixel streaming solution. So a little bit of latency there. It's through this online portal. It's just a little clunky. And then you export it and you have to bring it in through the Quixel bridge to use it in editor. That's the ways of the past. And now they've basically fully locked in on doing everything in editor. So you have the full suite of abilities to edit your character within the Unreal Engine 5 editor. And then it actually passes off some of the heavy lifting to some of the online Epic services. So dealing with all the textures and dealing with all the, you know, the stuff that you don't want to do locally, that's all dealt with online, and then you're able to download it to your computer. So the process is described as extremely fast, extremely fluid, hoping that this just makes, you know, the barrier to entry that much easier and allows a lot of the great metahuman capabilities just to come right to your PC without having to go to the web first. Next up, another huge MetaHuman update is the parametric body system. So if you've used the MetaHuman editor before, you're probably familiar with the fact that editing the bodies is not great in the past. So apparently that all changes here. In the past, the face has had really spectacular control of how you can manipulate the facial bones, the structure, the ear, the nose, the eyes. Everything with the face was very easily manipulatable, but now that same level of control is gonna come to the body. So in this demo here, we see that um, you know, you're able to either merge presets, so basically combine, you know, a set of different body types or edit individual body parts. So expand the size of the biceps, the wrists, extend the arms in a very parametric way that seems very easy to control and honestly is just the level of control that Unreal Engine users have been asking for. Other software like uh, Character Creator, the Reillusion Toolkit, have just had this control for years. Players have experienced, you know, what it feels like to make a character in a game, like, you know, in a game itself. And Unreal Engine developers have not had that freedom until now. So this is gonna be awesome. We've been asking for it, Epic delivered. So excited for this one. Another thing tagging onto that is the outfit asset. So tagging onto MetaHuman, the outfit asset is supposed to basically allow you to create clothing assets within Unreal Engine 5's MetaHuman editor and then basically translate all of those assets across different MetaHumans. So previously, the MetaHuman editor online, you'd create a clothing asset, it would automatically skin it to your character, and it wasn't really translatable across different assets. So now, using this new MetaHuman paradigm, you're going to be able to basically use one clothing asset across different metahumans. And when you edit the body or use it across different body types on a metahuman, the outfit assets can basically scale to different bodies parametrically, which means that a smaller male character can wear a t-shirt and a bigger male character twice his size can wear the exact same t-shirt and it would basically scale to fit that body. So it's awesome. I'm so excited for this. You know, the outfit creation has been something that there just hasn't really been well in the past and excited that they've gotten that note and acted on that. So that's great. Another one for MetaHuman, really knocking it out of the park here, is the video to facial animation pipeline. I've tried this out for myself. You know, I thought it was too good to be true, and it is just really awesome. So in this demo here, you can see that using a two-dimensional video, the actress, her facial animation is basically directly translated onto the, the MetaHuman facial rig. And, you know, I thought, you know, is this too good to be true? 
and they put it to the test, put their money where their mouth is, and during the State of Unreal presentation, did a live demo of basically using facial capture from a standard video camera to translate it onto a rig that was shown to the audience live, and it works awesome. I've tried this for myself. I'm gonna be creating a video of how to do that very soon, and honestly, this is just an absolutely insane feature that I can't believe everyone will have this capability to do this level of quality just right out of Unreal Engine with the power of their own smartphone. So this one's awesome. Honestly, can't even believe it's as good as it is. And then a few more updates. We're going to talk about motion matching. So if you're familiar with motion matching, uh, you know, in Unreal Engine 5, this is kind of a big push early on that allows you to create this really dynamic, fluid moving traversal system just, you know, right out of the box. They'll give you all the assets. So motion matching is evolving. And one of the ways they're doing that is allowing this sort of multi-character motion matching where in this demo the character rides a horse and the dynamic motion matching behaviors of the two characters are kind of working in tandem so the character riding the horse is taking cues from the horse itself so this is cool we love it you know just additions to the toolkit for motion matching is super awesome and then one more thing is the motion matching with the seamless cinematic integration so one of the things they described is that they're working on the tools to basically allow the gameplay to basically seamlessly transition into a cinematic. So there's already some camera tools for that. And one of the things that should, you know, be improved with this is that using now motion matching within the sequencer and having tracks specific to motion matching in the sequencer is just going to allow you to basically merge those animations super smoothly. So as gameplay ends and cinematic begins, you know, allowing that transition just to be super seamless is just going to, you know, make all your cinematics better. So that is all for today's video. This has been an absolutely huge Unreal Engine 5 update. I'm honestly super excited. I can't wait to jump in and try some of these things out. And stay tuned for more Unreal Engine 5 content and tutorials, general game news. And if you like this video, drop a like, leave a comment, and let me know what you want to hear about next. Have a great day.